looking at different plant life cycle differences in comparison to cannabis is going to be the focus of this lecture. Now, the reason why I do it in comparison to cannabis, so you can be able to see and appreciate some of the different life cycles that other plants have, and how they may share similarities and also differences with cannabis. So first off, there's three main classifications for plant life cycles. First one is an annual, and they complete their life cycle in one year. A perennial lives for three years or longer. And a biannual is a flowering plant that takes two years to complete its life cycle. It's separated into a vegetative year, followed by a dormancy period, and then leads into a reproductive portion of that plant's life cycle. So cannabis falls into the annual category. Uh, we can see how it kind of differs and changes from these two other types. So because cannabis is an annual plant, it typically grows for one year. And I put year in quotes here because I don't want you to think year is 365 days. Uh, but this cannabis or annual year is uh, able to complete a full life cycle in this time period. Now, as I said, a year is not the 12 months or 65 days, especially for cannabis. The production of seeds is the marker end of a completion of a life cycle. So we're able to grow cannabis in much less time than 12 months. Uh, so again, that the year or, or the annual plant year is marked by the production of seeds. Now this cannabis year, again, again keeping year in quotes, only limited amount of cannabis growers or breeders are looking to produce seeds. So by some definitions, that final bud contains no seeds, but that is the end of that particular life cycle. The main goal is to produce unfertilized flower because the amount of cannabinoids will be much higher. Often plant cycle is completed in 12 weeks or less, not 12 months, 12 weeks or less, especially for indoor operations. Mother or stock plants are kept longer, but these are only a select few individuals. If you're growing outdoors, so outdoor growing, you want to refer to what's called the USDA plant hardiness zone map. This will tell you kind of in relation to what plants are, what can tolerate, what can grow there, or how long the growing season is. You'll notice uh, elevation can impact this. The Rocky Mountains are here. The Appalachian Mountains are here. Uh, proximity to the coastline um, and large bodies of water can also impact this. This is more important for outdoor growing, uh, and you can see areas where it tends to be much colder. Cannabis growing season is a crop cycle, and this typically is when growing cannabis, the goal is to overlap growing seasons to ensure a continual harvest. Indoor operations with supplemental lighting can ensure consistent growing seasons to make the scheduling of end products predictable. So you kind of always want to have some plants uh, being propagated, some flowers drying, and you kind of want to keep this process continual instead of going through just one year and one crop. Now, cannabis has a distinctive growing cycle. Uh, so knowing the natural cycle and what's required can allow for each portion to be maximized for quick turnaround time and a high-end quality product. It's possible to force in cannabis into flower at any stage of growth, but it's a small immature plant like this one. If we force this one into flower, would not be an efficient method of production. So developing this understanding of the growth cycle that cannabis naturally takes on uh, allows growers that have control over photo periods uh, to maximize the production or yield they're getting per plant, trying to keep costs down and yields high.